Muslim cleric Sharafuddin Aliagon, thank you so much for joining us and uh, a happy Eid al to you. Same to you. All right, let me begin with this quote or uh, quotation, if you like. No nation is superior to the other, but the best amongst you is the one with the best piety. Yep. To Allah, expatiate on, on this for us as part of the significance of the Eid al Kabir celebration. Ya yeah, alhamdulillah rabbil alameen wa salatu wa salam ala rasul al alameen Sayyidina wa nabiyina wa lana Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, just like you read out, no nation is superior to another, no individual is superior to another except the level of piety that makes them special in the sight of the creator. Um, we, we all agree with me that Islam has come from Arab countries and um, uh, Islam has come from Arab countries mm -hmm. and that, that does not make them more important than other people who are sharing the same faith with them. The most important thing is piety. For example, the sacrificial animal we are trying to uh, observe and uh, put it forward as act of uh, worship before Allah has to do with piety. Allah has nothing to do with the meat. It is not a vampire that is ready to suck blood, but the piety and the obedience that mm -hmm. do this uh, I mean, commemoration of that of Prophet Ibrahim yeah. makes every one of them who is coming with that to become pious in the sight of Allah. So it has nothing to do with race, color, and wherever you come from or right. is from. It right. is about uh, piety. Uh, let, let me uh, just put two fast questions to you. One, it's called a feast of sacrifice. Yeah. Help us understand this and what the significance. Anyway, you talked about it. Maybe you repeat yourself. I don't know. But that's it. Just help on us understand why it's called a feast of sacrifice. Then let me quote the president. He says, Taking advantage of the celebration to exploit fellow citizens through outrageous prices of food and rams is inconsistent with the fine virtues of Islam. Yeah, well, the first question, the issue of the animals who are sacrificing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, like I said, uh, the first place, it is uh, a kind of commemoration of the willingness of Prophet Ibrahim والسلام, who intended to sacrifice his son to his creator after having a sound dream that he surely believed it was a dream, a sound one from his creator and he wanted to carry out this. So at the end of the day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala replaced the soul of uh, Ismail with uh, a, a big ram. So on that lessons, you know, Prophet Ab uh, Ibrahim came before Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. We see it as a, an emphatic sunnah of the Holy Prophet Muhammad, traced down to Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasallam, and it's a complete demonstration of obedience to Allah, submissiveness to Allah, and demonstration of piety. It is not as if Allah is interested in the meat oh. or the blood. Yes, we, okay, we the, get the that president, point. Uh, let let me even get the president. The, uh, okay. what, what's your sense of the president's statement about taking advantage of oh. people yeah. concerning raising the prices of food items and rams? He says it's inconsistent with the fine virtues of Islam. Yeah, truly it is quite un-Islamic. Uh, people take advantage of that to exploit their fellow and uh, people around them. Those who come around for food stops, those who come, come around for the animals to be used for sacrifice. It just because it has come, it has become the period of the big salah. So they hike the prices of this kind of animals. It is completely un-Islamic. It is an unlawful gains if they really understand. Okay. It, is, it is just that. It is important the, that the government itself put uh, uh, something like a, a measure to price control. So how does an uh, education like this provide an opportunity for a rethink or a rebirth on the part of political leaders or leaders who find themselves you know, in, in uh, positions of power? How does Islam and, of course, the celebration of Eid how should it reflect in the lives of our leaders? Uh, well, um, if uh, Muslims all over the world are sacrificing animals in, uh, in observing the obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I think it is also a lesson to everyone, even the non-political ones and the, the, po the, the politicians, that they must be obedient to their creator, that is number one. And number two, they should uphold the spirit of togetherness, 
truthfulness, love, and unity to every mankind. And at the same time, that should change their mindset. You understand? That is why I try to say that the issue of the meat and the blood is not what interests Allah. Mm -hmm. yep. But the, the, uh, the, the activity, the action, the intention, that is what matters most. So on this note, what the politicians do physically should not be different than what is on their minds. Whatever promise they have kept, that, I mean, they, they, whatever promise they have made to people should be kept. Mm -hmm. They should come up with their promises and do the right thing. because That will give them a good record before their creator and be obedient to Allah. In trying to be obedient to Allah, you'll be truthful to your people and you'll be sincere to them in all you're doing. What the the politics, a political aspect of it should be taken out. They should be more godly than being religious. All right, mm -hmm. uh, before we let you go, how does this occasion rub off on the individual's responsibility to family yeah. to the state and then to the nation uh well um it is important uh, as a head of the family that everyone in the family expects that uh, uh, the head of family will provide a sacrificial animal and we provide food for the family mm -hmm. so uh, uh, anyone who fails to do this if guys not taking the family will not really see him as a responsible person even though that has been taken care of by the prophet of islam and also has also been taken care of by the sharing of the meat mm -hmm. but it's it makes one to be more responsible because you have a whole year to prepare for this okay now uh, when it comes to either kabir or any of the um, you know celebrations yep. there's always that need to gather but against the backdrop of COVID-19, what is the messaging of the cleric, the uh, you know, to the Muslim uh, Ummah? Uh, yeah, the message has always been that we should observe the safety protocols and put all the necessary things in place, measures that will make people to behave themselves and be strict to the safety protocol. And the mosque, you 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 give yourself uh, the distance that is necessary, and at the same time, for them to be more conscious of the danger in the COVID-19, then at the same time, teach them more prayers that will completely get rid of the COVID-19. That has been the message we have always been sending to the congregation. Thank you okay. so much uh, for your views on Newsnight.